Hi there. Welcome to Calico Flower Studio. I'm Danny, and this is Clover. And today I'm going to make a collage in my visual journal and I'm incorporating the art of slow stitching. Um, so this is the first time I've ever done that on this channel, um, I believe. So stick around and see how it goes. <laughs> Uh, just sit back and relax and enjoy the process. Hi, baby. All right, welcome. Today I've got some of my little things here with me that I pulled out of my special little things tub. So I'll show you. Here, I've got this sort of gold reflective peel and stick vinyl. And then this is a strip from some Valentine's Day candy gram things that I made. This is a piece of paper with paint on it from an old painting. Same thing, these are paint on paper. These are a couple pieces of fabric. This is actually another gold reflective piece of paper from the inside of an envelope. These are prints on paper, so the ink has been printed with the printmaking technique. And this is this, the same thing, just with a different color. More paint on paper. and collage on paper. Just a little piece of it with some printed and drawn elements. So let's get started. So I have to admit, I have been watching The Last of Us on HBO and so I'm thinking a lot about mushrooms and fungi. <laughs> so I'm just like feeling a little inspired and I just wanna do something simple and sort of whimsical. So I'm going to start off with some basic like mushroom cap shapes. And if you've been watching the show as well, you know that <laughs> the type of fungus that's featured in the story is not your basic mushroom cap, but nevertheless. I'm going to cut these pieces up since uh, they're not quite long enough to make a stem as, as long as I want it to be for this little blue mushroom that I'm building, but I'm going to cut it into multiple strips and then stack them so it sort of has like sections, which is fine because this is going to be sort of abstract and quirky and it's okay. If you know how to make a shape, then however you make it is up to you. Because this is my world and I'm the creator. 
Shout out to Bob Ross. Mushrooms are so cute. This particular video that I'm sharing with you today is, um, as you can probably tell, it's a, it's sped up because this process of making this particular collage is incredibly slow. And I, I didn't expect you to sit with me throughout the whole process because you would be sitting here all day. But the first half of this video is me building this collage here and then there are going to be some elements of the collage that are incredibly slow and time consuming, which is not a bad thing because, you know, that can be pretty fun, but it's just not conducive to a normal speed video sharing. I love the way that piece, that the little marking on this piece with the white almost bursting up or sprouting up through that dark area sort of looks like some kind of plant growing out of the ground. There's a baby girl. I love the concept of using material, just using material like physical material that's like adhered or um, sewn or intertwined together as a way of mark making. So I think maybe my first instinct when thinking about mark making is to think of it as, you know, taking some kind of pencil or marker, paint, even a stamp, but using a kind of, um, like, utensil to make a mark, but to consider an object as a mark is very interesting to me. And so I think of collage as like a way of painting, of mark making. So when you think about it, you start to consider all of these are, um, you think about elements of line and direction and texture and pattern and it's just a different way of designating and changing the space you're using. So like these solid gold lines that I've glued across the middle of this collage, the sort of vertical lines that repeat themselves, they're like marks. You know, I'm using the material to, to draw or to paint. It's just instead of being a liquid pigment that I'm brushing on with a tool, it's a physical object that I'm adhering with glue. But ultimately it's, it's like a, a block. It's, it creates a block of color and pattern and shape and texture. It's just in a different way.
So here comes the part where um, I'm done with the collage and now this is the end of the cut and paste and glue portion of this piece. So now I'm going to do something called slow stitching. Now, I have to include a disclaimer here about slow stitching. <laughs> I learned from a colleague um, that slow stitching is typically not planned. I guess it's sort of like a, a free-flowing, in-the-moment kind of process where you, you stitch onto fabric, typically, and there's no planned out direction for the stitches. But as you can see here, I am drawing my design that I want to see stitched, and I'm also doing this on paper. So I'm going to use these lines as a guide for when I stitch onto this paper. And I'm going to use a needle and thread, and I'm going to sew right over these lines. So it'll just create a whole other dimension to this collage. And again, you know, I just want it to be simple, but fun and whimsical. So got my little swirlies, got my dashes, my arches and bubbles. And then I will start in with the needle and thread. So. So, like I said, typically a slow stitch is, is not planned out, but mine is planned because I wanted a particular design, I guess. But, you know, now that I know that it's not typically planned, next time maybe I'll just go for it without a plan. So, anyway, with paper, especially thicker paper, I find it easy to take, find it easier to take my needle and actually pre-poke all of my holes into my paper so that I'll take the needle and poke the holes where my thread will go in and out in order to create this design. So I'm just going to have to poke, 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 which is an incredibly time-consuming step. So we'll just speed it up. All right, so here you are. All my holes are poked, and yes, that is a nickel taped to my thumb. It's like it's like my makeshift thimble, and it, it helps me it helps me push the needle through really tough parts of the paper without hurting my skin. So now I'm going to start from the back because I got my knot at the end of the thread, but which will keep it from coming all the way through and just go back and forth in and out and through the holes one thing about stitching like this is sometimes the thread can get tangled up as you pull it back and forth through the holes and the key I found or I guess one way to help manage all of that is um, first of all just take it really slow If you pull the thread too quickly, it just gets all tangled up and makes a mess like this. So I just have to remember to take it slow. And as long and tedious as that can be, it's definitely worth it. And it can be relaxing, you know, just have a kind of like surrender to the slow process it can be a source of uh, meditation or some, some kind of meditation. 
So I went through one way, skipping every other pair of holes and going in one direction. And then um, in order to make a solid line out of my stitches on here, I'm going to go back the other direction and kind of fill in the gaps. Oh, also holding my finger on the string like this helps keep it from getting all tangled. So that is uh, one more tip. So I'm going to do many more of these, but we'll skip ahead so you can see the end result. As you can see, much time has passed. <laughs> it's the golden hour now, and the shadows on my desk are different, and, and look, we have a visitor. Hello, Clover. All right, so here we go. Now I'm feeling pretty good about the stitches, but I just want one more final touch and I'm gonna do that with paint. Oh yeah, and you check out the back. I think that the back of a sewn work of art is just as interesting as the front. So I felt like I should show you that too. I'm going to do a simple pattern behind the art, or I guess in the background, all over the page with this white paint. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. I just set my hand on top of the wet paint. But that's okay, we'll just we'll just fix it. And See, mistakes happen and even just the fact that I'm including this in the video and the final cut, I just wanted to show you how everybody makes mistakes and it happens. So as I'm making this pattern. I like to keep it loose, so I'm not super particular about, you know, the consistency of the marks that I'm making in paint. And in fact, I, I want them all to be kind of unique so that the pattern, while overall it, it looks and appears as a repetitive pattern, there's variation within the pattern. And that makes it more interesting and fun. More fun to look at and sort of more whimsical and loose. So I actually have to make a conscious effort to vary like the thickness of the marks, the length of the marks, the spacing between them. And also as an artist, you know, within the process, it keeps me on my toes. So I'm not just like a machine making the same exact mark over and over again. Well, that's it. I think I'm done. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. I, I've not really included this much stitching in a collage, at least on this channel. Um, but, you know, maybe you're a fiber artist and you have some thoughts or reflections and you'd like to share them. And I would love to hear them. So please feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to keep hanging out on this channel, then please subscribe. It's totally free and it helps out the channel. So why not? Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.